is totally new, but we'll see how we get on. What's going on self-made athletes good morning YouTube it is a beautiful day out here in Hong Kong and as we're on this journey to recovery today is a special day we are going to be doing a little bit of sound healing we're gonna try to learn from crystal soundscape how the power of sound crystals will help heal you mentally emotionally and just get you on track ready to hit the gym and that's what the series is all about how do you recover the fastest or what methods can help you recover before we hit the weights so let's go Welcome to Crystal Soundscape and this is really a space to explore all sorts of crystal balls and to really connect to crystals. Yeah. So here is a collection of all types of alchemy crystal balls. It has different energetic properties, has different sound and it will bring you a certain experience and you're welcome to play around with that. I will Thank show you. you how you can yeah. do that and I can also give you an experience of the balls. These crystals are from all around the world and we take really good care of these crystals crystals and you know we always play balls right here and so it's really perfect crystals are amazing first of all they change and really cleanse the space I mean I'm not sure if you notice like the moments you walk in there's a difference energy yeah. right here and I would really say the crystals play a big big role of holding that energy different crystals have different energetic properties some will help you bring more calmness some will bring you more energy maybe some will just help you relax and be more calming and I can also introduce them to you as well and they really are a gift from nature when the first moment we step through the door the energy is different it's not just because it's super hot in Hong Kong right now <laughs> it's it's actually you, you do feel a difference just walking into a space that is, it brings out more positive energy into you. And I'm super excited to explore it with you today. So yeah. thank you for having us. Great. I've been doing this little series on YouTube. It's all about recovery mm. and how you take someone's uh, physical, mental, spiritual journeys and just recover fully before someone can kind of go back into the gym space and push themselves and you know, make whatever gains they're trying to do mm. in the gym. I heard that, you know, crystals have got a bunch of properties that does a lot of healing. And I was wondering, you've got some beautiful crystals laid out here. If you could just explain how crystals kind of help 
the mm. healing process in general. So first of all, to actually explain what's happening and why they work, we kind of need to go back to what crystals really are, right? Ultimately, crystals are part of Earth. <laughs> and they have been existing way before human being and they really store, you can say, the secrets of the earth or um, just all that nature's information has been really stored in crystals, right? Now, crystal has the most dense form of structure. So they, unlike human being, they hold that energy. Like nothing can, you know, it's so hard that you can't really destroy the crystals, right? And crystals are the most powerful form of like energy transmission. In fact, our world would not be able to exist <laughs> without crystals. Like, look, even right now, we are able to transmit information through the internet. Like everything actually is powered by crystals. It is that powerful. Going back into the more healing side of crystals, first of all, it just reconnects us back to nature. And nothing is more powerful than that reconnection because when we separate from source, then you can easily get depleted, you feel tired or you feel disconnected. Crystals actually is just one, one um, powerful form from nature to remind us you're never separated. That itself, you have to kind of re remember where it comes from. And it's just really that reconnection to source that helps us to come back to our natural health. <laughs> and I noticed like you've got a bunch of different crystals, different sizes, different shapes, different colors. Yeah. Um, obviously, for funny reasons, does shape or size matter for a crystal. Mm. Does a bigger rock mean that it omits more energy? It gives you stronger, you know, outside kind of energy that it can bring to you or actually it doesn't really matter or how about color, density? Some of mm. them are like a little bit more pale, some of them are a lot stronger in color. Yeah. Can you explain that? I would agree, <laughs> size does matter. <laughs> One time I went to Australia, they have a place called Crystal Palace. And the crystals are gigantic, right? It's powerful because the field of it, like it covers a much bigger space, right? That energy. So it does matter. <laughs> but at the same time, it doesn't mean that small. Um, I mean, ultimately, it is crystals, right? Um, sometimes wearing a crystals is just as powerful. So it kind of acts differently. And when you talk about shape, right? It shifts the energy itself, right? So if you look at like a round, round type of crystals like if you look at it it just feels very smooth and it brings everything to harmony because it doesn't have sharp edges so round crystals is really great of to harmonize things like maybe there are conflicts and different kind of edges right but if you have a round crystal in terms of physical space it brings that harmony but also in terms of human relationships it brings that like it's smoothing everything out right so there is that shape just directs energy right first as you look at this this is a tower right immediately your focus it's like it brings you to a point right so these type of crystals really help to sharpen your focus and that gathers the power into one kind of like laser beam type of energy. That will have a different effect and that might may be very helpful if you want to materialize certain things or you're directing energy to a point for healing and that's very useful for that purpose. So shape does direct energy differently for that purpose. How about like some of these other rocks that we have here that don't really have a shape to them? Maybe it's its natural form. Yeah, I mean, these are polished, right? And these are what we call raw stone. Personally, I love raw stone just because it's not polished. It's from <laughs> nature, right? It's yeah. very raw. Yeah. And that I just love connecting to, to that natural form of crystals. And um, different, different crystals definitely have different purpose, right? Like the tourmaline, say like the black one, it always helps to ground us or like it helps detoxify. Kind of blue stones, it always helps to um, enhance communication, especially if you're a teacher, if you need to transmit something or like people need to understand some things. Like these, this is aquamarine, right? It's kind of famous for enhancing that type of quality. So if you dwell into the world of crystals, 
skills. There is just so much that you actually can connect to enhance a certain elements that you want to bring in more in your life and that's that's why we're they are here. Now you just brought up a really good point. Obviously there's some kind of connect with mm. a person and the crystal. Yeah. And so, you know, when I look at the blue one, it's beautiful, but maybe I don't associate with it as much. Like I'm not drawn into it, even though I know that aquamarine is great for a certain energy or to bring out a positive kind of vibe right mm. but for example the tourmaline or the rose quartz these colors even though they're so dark or the tourmaline i should say it's so dark that one draws me in more is there a reason for that that's a really good question actually we we have a saying a lot of times it's not so much you choose the crystals it's almost like the crystals actually choose you right oh, okay. like you walk in and then for some reason today like wow it's almost like that crystals is just like speaking to me right but more because you walk in you have a certain energy signature right or maybe there is something you're lacking and that structure it's what you actually need <laughs> so all of a sudden you feel like well i don't know why but it's i'm so drawn to this or like that color just keeps like connecting right we always say they're a super wise being <laughs> um, i mean they're from the mineral kingdom usually maybe there's a lack of something or you're looking for something maybe on the intellectual level you don't even you're not aware of it but you are drawn to it or it feels like it's calling you or you're attracting to that it's for a specific reason. Is it okay to be attracted to different crystals on different days? Or yeah. Or is it usually very consistent? Like day in, day out, maybe the, the sphere one, that's like my go-to. But on a certain day, if something happens, good or bad, an additional crystal kind of just draws me in. Like, how does that work? I would definitely say so. I mean, look, every day you're different, right? Like, I mean, even our energy center is a little bit different. So maybe for a period of time, that's something that you really need, right? And, but when that something is already complete or you fulfilled on it, there are some other things that call you more or that you're drawn to it more. So that's all. Every day is a little bit different or maybe a different stage of life you're different. That's, that's all. Do, do people get attached to crystals too much? Like, if I'm hurting because of a um, relationship or uh, a family member passed away, um, and I know that a specific crystal can provide me with the property to heal that emotional kind of detachment, will I get attached to that crystal and kind of rely on it too much? Or it, it just fluctuates. Ultimately, I don't really think so because it's not really about the crystals. It, they are just here to help you. It's here to help you connect to a certain quality, right? So ultimately, it's not really about the crystals. It's about you, right? And you know, when when that already it's complete, maybe you're drawn to another element and that's all. I would never say you're gonna be too attached to anything. <laughs> Something that I've been wondering about as well is crystals give off so much of its own energy. Is Do you ever have to like clean it, cleanse it to restore the energy or does it just constantly give? There are different people saying different kind of things, right? But from what I've observed myself, sometimes they, they do get tired because, you know, they do a lot. And, and the one way to really, it's good to recharge them is to put it under the full moon. Look, crystals are more like a yin energy thing. You never put them underneath the sun because um, it will lose its brilliance. You will know, you will know. Sometimes it looks like, oh, this crystals kind of looks a little bit dull right oh, like okay. and um, sometimes they do need some cleansing um, maybe put it back into uh, salt some crystals don't like to be washed you will kind of know but the best way is to really put it underneath the full moon some of them there are certain crystals they never get tired like they always regenerate everybody's different <laughs> yeah that's really yeah. cool and so guys I just wanted to reiterate what Martina said it totally lines up with what Latau said on the last video that we created, which was there is something outside beyond us that draws you in. And exactly like Martina said, when you step into the room, you'll feel it. When you go into a rack of crystals, certain crystals will be like, I choose you. It's, it's not the other way around. It's, you think you have the power, but 
actually there's something beyond you that's kind of drawing you in, which is super cool. I, I find that super fascinating. So now we're moving into the space of sound and I wanted to ask you how sound helps with healing as well. So we talked about how crystals can help with healing. How does sound help with healing? Yeah, ultimately, one of the things that we need to touch on is vibrational being, what does that mean? Ultimately, we're just energy being, right? Everything is a form because it is vibrational. Like there is, you're a life form and the sound is also a type of vibration. That's actually one perspective to look at it, like why sound works and why sound provides healing. It is that connection because you are an energy structure and a sound is also a manifestation of an energy structure. There's been so many kind of like vibrational retreats that I've seen recently. So some people use sound bowls, which you have laid out here in front of you. More recently, someone's introduced me to gong baths and things like that. Um, is there a difference between using different types of instruments or is it relatively the same as long as the vibration hits a certain nerve kind of thing? The types of instruments definitely bring out a certain quality so different people respond differently to it right like gong has a very kind of ancient type of energy or like it feels very ancient right like i think cycle we all have a connection with gong like way back right um so it brings in deep it brings up deep stuff right like things you may not even be very aware of So it's quite deep. Crystals, on the other hand, is very stable and clean. So it brings out a different kind of response, and that's all. So different people have a different connection to the type of instruments that we use. Mm. Um, is it safe to play roles, for instance, around like babies? So maybe someone who's pregnant or has just given birth? Or it's completely pets. safe. Um, but I would have to say, um, ultimately, why it works, there are two factors, like one, the instruments, right? There is an integrity about the instruments, whether they are good, right? But also the person who is playing it, what's the intention, right? Is the person who's connected to the client. That actually is very key as well. I'm just looking at the bowls in front of you and the mass amount of bowls you got behind you, and obviously there's you know, some bowls are bigger, um, some are taller, some are wider in base, some are a little bit smaller, different colors once again, and I'm guessing the alchemy kind of crystal behind it gives it a different sound, a different energy source. You've got one behind you with kind of like a little handle to it. Could you just explain how different types of bowls or different size of bowls kind of elevate us? Sure. The bigger bowls usually have a deeper sound. A deeper sound will bring out a certain emotion. Like so playing this, you probably will feel calm and you are very here and grounded. Versus if I play a smaller bowl, it has a much higher pitch. So it's almost like it's very awakening, it's very fresh. And sometimes we need that, right? Like we need that kind of light or just to cut the crap. <laughs> mm. Or like we need a combination of soothing, grounding, at the same time maybe we need some clarity. So the size does make a difference, right? And how you, how you combine that makes a difference. And again, um, oh, you were asking me about these, right? These are what we call the practi practitioner bowl. Um, it just gives the healer a more flexible approach to playing. So this one I can hold it. Because if I hold these, these ones, it's, it's easily be broken. But this one I can hold it. I can do healing and on, the, on the body or I can just fill the space much easier with the ability to hold onto it. That's, that's so cool. Um, obviously, you can't hold on to the bowl because if you hold on to it, it'll kind of mute some of the ringing. I've seen people done it, but oh, really? I just kind of need to 
really careful yeah. right at that sound. Yeah. I don't want to break one. Um, and I noticed that you have a lot of alchemy bowls. And the first time, so my girlfriend is like super into this space and when I was doing my own research, I had no idea. So, excuse me if I'm pronouncing this wrong. T Tibetan? Tibetan. Tibetan. Yeah, that style bowl is kind of made out of like a metal, right? Yes. So how does that differ from alchemy bowls? Oh, too bad I don't have one. I actually started out with Tibetan bowls, right? I mean, again, it has a very ancient kind of sound. Um, it reminds you of being in a temple right mm. away, right? Sound-wise, I mean, I actually have checked, I think I, once we kind of did a little test um, of the sound waves of crystal bowls and the Tibetan bowls. For the Tibetan bowls, it, it's very unstable. It, it has have the wing, 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 kind of sound, right? It's very not stable. And it brings a different kind of emotion to it. Crystals, super stable. It's like, it doesn't have that um, unstable kind of waves happening because they're crystals, they're very steady, they're very stable, and again, it brings a whole different energetic property. Can I also ask you the difference between frosted bowls, these beautiful bowls that are colored, and something called morph bowls? Frosted bowls are the thicker type, right? It's very grounding, um, but it doesn't have a very big dimension to it. It's just kind of very much here, but it's very here, it's very grounding. Alchemy bowls offer a much bigger range in terms of bringing you to different dimensions for the consciousness. Um, you can go really high up, you can go really deep. So it just has a much bigger range in terms of dimension. Morph bow is actually a broken bow. And oh. then, yeah, so you know, sometimes we do break bows. If it is shattered, it can't be healed anymore. But sometimes it has like a hole, right? Mm. So then they can still we call heal it. So um, they just morphed it. A lot of times, though, even though it doesn't look very beautiful anymore, but the sound usually is much more beautiful. Does it bring out like a richer sound, or does the sound completely change? The sound does change. The oh, sound okay. does change. But I, I mean, I have done a few times by now, or even for clients. Um, they usually come back sounding better. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it's quite amazing. That's good to know. And I guess my last question about sound, like crystal bowls and things like that is, what can someone expect at like something like a sound bath? Um, what, what exactly does it mean um, if I go to a retreat and like, oh, we offer sound bath or something like that? I don't normally like to um, create expectation, but what usually happens is that, first of all, it really brings you to a deep, relaxed state. Um, because what happens is that, look, during the day, you might be kind of fragmented just because you pulled either, you're still thinking about something in the past or you're worried about something in the future. Like, you're just not present. <laughs> but being in the sound bath, the minimal, you will be aligned back to like your optimal state where you are present. <laughs> Look, when you are present, you are super powerful because you are just being in the moment, right? You have all the resources and everything. We are not when we are not here, like you are still worry about something or you are angry about something. Then your consciousness is actually not in the present and you lose power. So I would say at the base level, right? Um, what is going to help is that you just bring back to your natural state where you are aligned, where you are fully in the present. So we're gonna do a little test and I'm gonna share, keep it super real with this session and I'm gonna try to draw out as much of Martina as possible. So I recently had a family member pass away and so I've got a lot of emotions on that side. Maybe that I'm suppressing, I don't know. Um, and I'm not sure if the sound healing session will draw that out. Um, obviously got a lot of stresses at work, um, so I find myself not being able to work out as much as I used to. I'm not sure if it's because my body's not fully at 100% because I'm not sleeping as well and things like that. So I'm going to leave it in the hands of Martina. She's going to pick, or she's picked some bowls for me for this session. And let's see how we get on with that. Well, I'm going to invite you to lie down. Okay. Um, Just in front here, yeah? Actually, why don't you 
turn your head facing that way. I'm actually gonna put some crystals on your hand. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. All right, good. This is totally new, but we'll see how we get on. Whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and close your eyes. And the first thing I would like you to do is to leave a gap between the upper teeth and your lower teeth. Your lips can still be closed, but make sure there's space from within. I mean, usually when you're lying down, you're quite relaxed, but just want to make sure that your jaw is not clenched. Allow your neck to relax and the shoulders to sink down to the earth. to relax the bones deep towards the earth, knowing that you're always being supported and loved. From here, I invite you to take a long, long deep breath in. Slightly open your mouth, exhale everything out. One more time, deep breath in from your belly, breathing in light, love, nurture. Exhale. Take the time whenever you feel ready, then you can slowly open your eyes yourself back to the present moment. So just just to like <laughs> talk about the feelings of that um, 
at the very beginning, I don't know which bowl you're playing, obviously I had my eyes closed, but I just felt super um, grounded would be the word because we use it so much, but I just felt everything just coming back right mm. into that moment and everything was just pitch black. And it was a flood of emotions that, mm. that brought that was brought on by what what's happening around me, but ultimately that all got encapsulated so that I could just be still. Mm. And it, it was a nice experience to to have you guide me because I didn't know what rocks you put on my hands. Mm. I also didn't know the rocks that were placed around me. Having you guide me, I felt a little bit tense. So for you to like tell me, okay, just you know, relax your your shoulders, yeah, let them sink in, and it gave a very visual, vivid thought process for me. Mm. It literally felt like I was laying on like a hill, and yeah. the roots of the earth earth was just drawing me in to relax, and I was just kind of sinking in. But that was really good. Um, I felt mm. I felt a lot of different types of emotions, like you mentioned, different tones of bowls yeah. uh, enrich certain things. The singing or the humming as well also like kind of boosted that energy and maybe the one thing that's on my mind a lot at the moment is, is my grandmother, she's the one who passed yeah. away. So um, having a lot of flashbacks of really happy moments yeah. of when I was with her, um, it, it just kind of all brought um, yeah. this yeah. session. So, Thank you so much for, for that. It was beautiful. It was lovely. Guys, I had a wonderful time learning about crystals, alchemy bowls, and just a quick snippet of you know what Martina does as a practitioner and how she helps and heals people. I hope that this video was informational to you as well. I can't wait to see you on the next one. But until next time, see you later.